Friends, we're continuing with the theme that we last looked at uh, in Isaiah 30. You might remember the people of God are very tempted to look for help from some kind of empire, some kind of strong nation that they can turn to. That's a, that's a great temptation for them. And they need to not look to Egypt or to the Assyrian Empire somehow for help. And we especially focused last time on Egypt. And this was a recurring theme that people in the Promised Land, when they got in trouble, they started to think Egypt, that Egypt might be a, a good place for help. You know, not considering the history of what happened in terms of the Egyptian domination over the Hebrews for so many centuries and how they cried out to God and God delivered them from the Egyptians. And he said, never go back that way again. See, they forgot all about that. They forget about the Lord and they go this other way. Now we're continuing in that theme in chapter 31. He says, woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses and trust in chariots because they're many and in horsemen because they're very strong. See, it's the military might that is impressive often to people. But what do they ignore? They do not look to the Holy One of Israel. They don't look to God, who's stronger than any army out there. They do not consult the Lord. They forget about the Word of God. So what about the Lord? It says, well, He, he is wise and he brings disaster. He can bring disaster on his own people. He can bring disaster on Egypt. He can bring disaster on Assyria. He does not call back his words. But he will arise against the house of, of the evildoers and against the helpers of those who work iniquity. So what about these Egyptians? What can we say about them? Well, the Egyptians, they're man and not God. Very obvious point. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. Again, very obvious. When the Lord stretches out his hand, the helper will stumble and he who is helped will fall. So both Egypt that you're counting on for help and you yourselves that should be looking to the Lord, both of you are going to fall and you'll perish together. Now, what about God? Let's turn our focus back to him. Thus the Lord said to me, says Isaiah, as a lion or a young lion growls over his prey, and when a band of shepherds is called out against him, he's not terrified by their shouting or daunted at their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its hill. In other words, it's not like God sees the Egyptians coming and said, oh, oh now I'm frightened, or the Assyrians. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No, like birds hovering, so the Lord of hosts will protect Jerusalem. He's going to be a covering over the holy city of God. And he will protect it and deliver it. He will spare it and rescue it. So turn to him. Yeah, and that becomes the point of the whole chapter. Turn to him from whom people have deeply revolted. So, in other words, don't take a survey. Don't look at what the world is doing. Don't go to Egyptians for spiritual advice or to the Assyrians for their idols. No, turn to him. Even though people all over the world may have deeply revolted against him, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, turn to him, O children of Israel, for in that day, everyone shall cast away his idols of silver. They're going to be useless. And his idols of gold of no value, really, to you, which your hands have sinfully made for you. you got to turn to him. And by the way, if you were just thinking about the Egyptians, he explicitly comes to the Assyrians. Now, the Egyptians are to the south and to the west. The Assyrians were to the north and to the east. Both of them gigantic imperial powers. The Assyrian shall fall by the sword, not of man. God is over all these empires. And a sword, not of man, shall devour him. The Assyrian empire and the Assyrian ruler. And he shall flee from the sword. And his young men shall be put to forced labor. His rock 
shall pass away in terror. Who are they counting on? Who's their rock? Their idols, their false gods, and his officers desert the standard in panic. With all their power, they're going to desert in panic, declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and whose furnace is, is in Jerusalem. So when Jesus has come and he is establishing his, key, his kingdom, he's preaching and teaching the kingdom. He is preaching and teaching the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of Egypt or Assyria or the United States of America or anything else under the sun, but the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, and that kingdom will never fail because God is God and the rest are not. Father, thank you for the clarity that we get, that though we might have a temptation to run off to seek our refuge in the powers of this world, we need to turn to you, even though men deeply revolt against you, we turn to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.